The purpose of fumigation is to apply gas to a building. To get the correct concentration to penetrate the timbers, we need to cover the structure with gas-proof tops and secure them to create an airtight space. The process. We begin by measuring the building and working out the layout of the tops. Each top is 450 micron, PVC welded at all joints. The tops vary in size from 18 by 18 meters to 21 by 30 meters. The volume of the building is calculated and the amount of gas needed is calculated on the fuming guide using the recommended factor as needed per target insect. This varies from 1 to 10. The shooting hose is placed strategically into position together with the circulation fan. The monitoring hoses are then secured at various levels to draw samples during the fumigation and to monitor the gas levels. Once we have decided how to lay the tops, we look at preparing the building. We remove all possible antennae, TV dishes and structures that may make it difficult for the top to cover. The perimeter around the structure is prepared by removing any loose deposits of sticks and stones to allow for a good seal on the ground. All corners and sharp edges are protected by using sandbags and securing them with duct tape. The soil is then watered down at least one meter wide to create the barrier seal that will allow the gas to be contained under the top. The tops are then pulled up in a snake format and laid into position. It is then opened in a process to allow the top to cover the building and reach the ground with at least one meter slack on the floor to allow for a good seal. After the first top is laid, a second one is pulled onto the building in a snake-like form and placed into position. It is then opened systematically so that the leading edge overlaps the other top by approximately 600 millimeters. The seam then takes two tops and a 38 millimeter by 38 millimeter baton is placed on the edge and tightly rolled at least three times and then clamped with G clamps. The clamps are placed with the screw on the outside to prevent damage to the top. When the top is secured, the top is opened further and dropped down to the ground. The sides of the tops are then joined in the same manner and rolled up at the bottom, ensuring that it is flat with the ground. Sandbags or sand snakes are then laid along the bottom of the top on the wet soil, creating a seal where the gas cannot escape. This process is repeated when more tops are lifted onto the roof and secured. The key here is to ensure that you have a complete seal to contain the gas for as long as possible. Then comes the inspection. The structure is inspected to ensure all possible leaking points, like small holes in the top, are sealed and that the tops are secured. A rope is pulled around the structure and pulled tight to prevent bellowing should the wind come up during the fumigation. Danger signs are placed and staff are all accounted for. Once this is done, the fumigator may commence the gassing procedure. Introduction of the gas. The fumigator ensures all staff are accounted for and then proceeds to set up the gassing point. He prepares the clear check and ensures that it is calibrated and ready for use. A scale is placed in position and the cylinder is placed on it. The weight is measured and recorded on the side of the bottle. The amount of gas to be introduced is written on the bottle. The fitting and gas pipe is connected, the shooting fans are started and ready for the gassing process. The fumigator dons the face shield and ensures that a bottle of water is within easy reach in case of a pipe burst to wash down contamination or frostbite. The fumigator then ensures all spectators are away from the immediate area and slowly opens the gas bottle using the special key to open the cylinder. Once the gas has filled the pipe, the fumigator opens the tap further 
to release the gas under pressure. This causes the vaporizing action. A shooting pipe must not be shorter than 30 meters as it will affect the vaporizing factor. The fumigator then monitors the scale to ensure that the gas is moving, and then, at the given weight, he closes the cylinder. The fumigator waits about 15 minutes to ensure that all the gas has moved out of the pipe. The fitting is removed and the safety cap is replaced on the cylinder. After that, the cylinder is removed and stowed safely. The fumigator then takes the clear check and proceeds to check around the structure for any leakage. When the gas leaks, the fumigator will then take necessary steps to seal or add extra sandbags to eliminate the leak. Once this check is done and the fumigator is satisfied that there is a good seal and that the cover is as planned, the fumigator will set up the fumiscope. This unit will monitor the gas levels from the monitoring hoses placed in the building. The fumiscope takes about 15 minutes to warm up and be calibrated. The monitor hose is connected and readings are recorded. These readings are placed in the Douglas program that will tell the fumigator that the fumigation is on target, or other factors like you need more gas or opening time may be extended or reduced. Further readings are taken throughout the fumigation to determine if the target concentration point is achieved. This confirmation is needed to be sure that the target insects are dead. The site is secured by placing a security guard or other means of preventing anyone from entering. The removal process. After the recommended time on the gas, the fumigator and the team will commence the degassing process. During this process, the team removes all the sandbags. Using the clear check apparatus, the fumigator will monitor the sections of top where it was pulled open to allow the gas to escape. Depending on the gas concentrations on the clear check, the clamps are removed and the joints are opened. The tarps are dropped to the ground when the clear check reveals safe concentrations. After a while, the fumigator will put on their PPE and the SCBA set self-containing breathing apparatus with full face mask. Now the fumigator will enter the building and open some doors and windows to facilitate natural ventilation, not spending more than five minutes in the building. Mechanical ventilation using electrical fans is operated to help increase the speed of aeration and degassing. The fumigator will leave the building to air for plus minus 20 minutes, and then, with the SCBA donned, enter and open the windows and doors. After a while, they will regularly check until the clear check reveals low or no gas levels. Should there be any gas levels, the fumigator will exit the building and after a while return with their SCBA set to start taking gas readings with the clear check apparatus. Once the gas readings are below three parts per molecule, the rest of the team is called in to help with the remaining cleanup. They will remove the gas shooting pipes and monitoring lines, remove electrical fans, and sweep up dead insects. At the same time, the building is airing, ensuring that they work upwind and not in the path of the aired gas. The team begins folding up the tarps. The fumigator will take final gas readings, ensuring that they check all possible areas, i.e. closed spaces, cellars, locked cupboards, cabinets, etc for a second time. When the readings are zero grams per cubic meter, they declare the building gas-free and issue the certificate of fumigation. They will also declare the building safe for occupants to return.